Hello and welcome to the full pedicure tutorial of my vi mini video of cleaning the witch toenail. I didn't come up with that name. My client actually said that she thought her toenail looked like a witch toenail and she thought it was ugly. But it was not ugly. We all have something crazy happen every now and then and I'm going to show you how to deal with that. Welcome to the Meticulous Manicurist Nail Tutorials. I'm Lori Halloway, Master Nail Technician, Salon Owner, and Author of Sheer Savvy, Secrets and Strategies for Successful Salon Apprenticeships. I'm setting a new standard in nail education utilizing real life, real situations for real learning. My tutorials provide explicit instruction for a thorough understanding of theory and technique. Join me by subscribing today to learn everything you need to know to be the best. In this video, you're going to see um, gel toenail polish removal, toenail cutting, cleaning, I um, can't remember if I filmed the filing of the feet at this very second, um, reapplication of the gel polish, and then a foot massage. And I'm going to play some relaxing music during this pedicure, and then when I think you need a little extra ins instruction, then I'll pipe in. So enjoy. Pretty easy to get gel polish off toenails after they have been soaking in the pedicure bath. So all you have to do is start to file the toenails. The big toenail is the hardest one to get off and you're going to have to end up scruffing off the gel top coat and into the color a little bit before you put some acetone on a piece of cotton and sit it on the nail and let it soak in a little bit. So you're going to see me do that here in a second while I finish filing the rest of the toenails. But it's pretty easy to file the gel polish off of the other toenails. You don't need to use anything else really with those.
I know, I know, I know, it looks like a complete train wreck after your Mood Gel Polish Off Toes. Don't worry, it'll all be fine. It looks a mess now because there's just a lot of dried up, dusty debris everywhere. But once you put the cuticle remover around the toes and finish pushing back the cuticles and remove a lot of that dead skin, it'll all look fine. So don't panic. Just get through your steps and it'll all be fine in the end. Trust me. I'm using my quarter inch Miha's nippers. They're stainless steel, they're professional quality. There's lots of other stainless steel nippers on the market. I do have some links in the description where you can find some that will do the job if you're trying to trim your own toenails at home. If you need professionals looking for them, um, just look up Miha's professional quarter inch stainless steel nippers. Most likely fall off in two to three months. She has been having problems with this nail for over a year, but because she's always training, she doesn't want to have the nail removed. Hopefully, when it falls off, it'll have enough time for the callus under the nail to go away. Nails fall off from this kind of trauma because the fluid under the nail creates so much pressure on the matrix where the nail is created that the body recognizes the trauma and it goes into pause mode and then resets and a new nail will start to grow and push off the damage to nail. So as I'm editing this video I realize I have imported the original text from the short video into this new video and you can tell in the tone of my voice how tired I am right now so if you're wondering oh my gosh it sounds like two different people talking that's why because it's like midnight and I'm editing a video and I'm super tired so sorry for the two contrasting tones of voice and probably energy level. with the acrylic nippers I try to trim them in the shape that I need them to be so I do not have to do a lot of filing with the fingernail file I'm really just trying to get off the rough edges into smooth corners so they don't snag on her socks and they don't cut into her other toes I cut the files in half and they're single-use files I dispose of them when I am finished Dead skin is so much easier to remove when it is wet. So if your cuticle remover has penetrated into the skin, go ahead and apply another coat so it's still 
kind of wet and soggy when you pick up your cuticle pusher to push back that skin because it comes off a lot easier. been buying mini buffer blocks. It's just easier than cutting up the little white blocks into five pieces. Um, and I, I do have a link in the description for the mini blocks. But if you can't find the mini blocks, then you can buy white buffer blocks and then just use a pair of scissors and cut them up. It it's just makes my hand tired and it really wears out the scissors really fast when you're cutting uh, sandpaper.
sure you've heard in the past me make comments about never using an electric file on the natural nail, except in the instance where your goal is to thin out the natural nail. And that is why I'm using it here, because the callus has pushed her toenail up so far that it's just going to continue to hit her shoe and make the problem even worse. When you're using a sanding band on the natural nail, you have to be careful not to get close to the skin. If it catches the edge of the skin, it will slice the skin. Even on the slowest speed, an electric file rotates at 53 rotations per second, so you have to be very careful. When I get close to the cuticle, I actually go up and down and not left to right. You also cannot press down when you're using an electric file. You have to let the file do the work. If you press down, it'll create too much heat and it will hurt. I'm switching here to a diamond bit file just to get off a little bit more of that skin and so I can get closer to her cuticle. The diamond bit will not cut her skin at all. It's all got rounded edges and I just use very, very light pressure and try to get a little bit closer into the nail walls in the cuticle area. This skin is really, really calloused. I mean, she's a heavy duty runner. She runs over 100 miles a week. So I do not want to get all of the skin off or everything will be very tender. the foot and the towel, I apply callus eliminator on a brush and apply it to the bottom of the foot and it soaks into the dead skin on the foot while I'm working on the toes and then when I go to use my foot paddle it comes off really easy. And there's a coarse side and a fine side on this foot pile. The white side is the coarse side, the orange side is the fine side and it just gets off all of the, the dead skin really, really well. And I have these foot files on my online store. After filing the bottom of the feet, 
I take a tangerine scented sea salt scrub and I apply it to the bottom of the foot and to the leg and this helps moisturize any dead skin and remove any loose skin that's still on the bottom of the foot. And back in the water she goes. We're going to do all the same steps on the opposite foot and I, I just looked ahead and I, you can see me apply the cuticle illuminator to the bottom of the foot with the applicator brush right here.
When it's time to file the bottom of the foot, always rub off all of the callus eliminator off of the foot because a lot of the dead skin comes off with that product and then it won't get all clogged up in your foot file and this is, gets totally out of frame so I'm just going to skip ahead. After their foot has come out of the water again, you're going to see there's still a lot of dead skin. The dead skin is going to be white because it's soggy. So use your cuticle pusher and you're, that's when you're going to be using your nippers to remove all of that leftover dead skin that you didn't get off the first time around. This dead skin that I'm trimming off right here, the toenail was actually cutting into her other toe, so it's formed a little callus on that toe as well.
Here's a little trick I do with the cotton and the non-lint wipe to keep the cotton from sticking all over the toes when you're trying to polish. Put it right inside the wipe so you have enough acetone on the inside but on the outside there's no cotton sticking to the toe. I fast forwarded the polish application. I'm using eye gel, base coat, and top coat, and Creative Nail Black Gel Polish. Now with Creative Nail, even though the manufacturer says that it's an LED cured gel polish, you can cure it in a UV for 60 seconds.
And last but not least is the foot massage. You always do the foot massage with gel polish at the end. You cannot apply lotion to the nail plate before you apply the gel polish or cuticle oil. That always goes at the very end as well. Anybody that has gel polish that's looking dimply, it's because you have oil on the nail plate. Anything that's shrinking away, it's because there's oil in the nail plate. So if you stuck with me to the end of this video, thanks for watching. There are some before and after photos coming up. Um, please help me grow my channel by sharing my videos. If you'd like to comment, you do need to subscribe. Subscribing is free. All it will do is notify you the next time that I upload a video. If there's anything particular that you would like to be addressed, you can leave that message in the comments as well. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to visit my channel. I hope you've chosen to subscribe. Here are some other great videos for you to check out. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon.